Steve here, and a happy, happy new year to you. I think 2011 is going to be a great year in woodworking in general, and hopefully it's going to be a great year here in the Down to Earth Woodworking Shop as well. We're going to have some exciting projects, but there's also going to be some big changes in the shop itself, but more about that later. Did you make your New Year's resolutions? I'll share with you a couple of resolutions I made as far as woodworking. Number one, I want to stick with what I do and what I know to some extent. I want to do what I do best, but I want to make sure that every single time I come into the shop, I learn something new. So with that in mind, I thought it would be uh, interesting for some at least to take a look at how I noodle out a design. I'm not an engineer and I'm not a draftsman. I can barely draw a straight line with a ruler, as the old saying goes. But ultimately, I get them done. And I get them done by kind of just noodling it out. I suspect a lot of you do that too. So let's take a look at how I'm noodling out the design for this desk a little bit at a time. Remember, I'm going to be building a desk, a credenza, and a bookcase for my home office. I'm starting with the desk because I actually need that first. So let's take a look at how that's going to work. Okay, before you start laughing, I did warn you ahead of time that I really can't draw. But I can sketch a little bit. Uh, basically, I sketch in pencil very, very lightly because I learned a long time ago that the darker I sketch, the harder it is to erase my mistakes. But I've gone back over this sketch with a pen to make it dark enough so you could see. You can see that from my crude drawing here, basically on this side of the desk, which I'm calling the back, I'm calling the front of the desk the side where I'll be sitting. This is going to be out in the middle of the floor, the part that people will see. I wanted to have an arched stretcher on this side and on the two ends. Basically, I want to carry that arched theme throughout the uh, design. Now, on the operator side of the desk, I'm probably going to put a couple of drawers in. Um, as I mentioned before, I've cut the legs out to size, but I haven't decided yet if I want to taper them, if I want to put some kind of design. I'm kind of leaning towards something like this, which is going to be an uh, inlay of maple on the cherry to give it some contrast. But We'll worry about that later. I don't know if you can see this. I'll get it in close. But when I originally thought about this, I was going to make the edge of the top of the desk something like this. The more I thought about it, I decided that this would be better. So I just kind of turned it upside down. But basically, I think that this little upswept edge on the underside of the top of the desk will sort of carry through this uh, sort of arch design that I'm working on. So the question became, how am I going to lay out the um, mortises and get these arch stretchers exactly the right size? And I decided that uh, what I really needed to do was a full-size drawing. So let me show you how I went about doing that. In order to make a full-size drawing, I needed a full-size something to draw on. MDF is a good answer for that. It's stiff. It's easy to draw on. It's a little difficult for the pencil lines to show up great, but if you can see them, it's good enough. Uh, MDF is relatively inexpensive, and while I was at the big box store, I had them rip it down to just a smidge over 30 inches full length. The reason I did that is because I'm going to draw the desk from the what I'm calling the back side, or the side where the arched stretcher shows, and I knew that my desk was 30 inches, going to be, is going to be 30 inches tall, so I can draw it full size, full length on this uh, sheet of MDF. The first thing that I did was drew in what I knew. I know the leg stock because I've already made it. So I drew in a leg using the factory edge of the MDF as a reference edge. The uh, side they ripped, of course, is not straight. 
and I drew in the leg and uh, made it exactly the size of my stock. If I ultimately decide to taper the leg, I'll taper it below the stretcher so it really won't matter. I'm just going to draw it in straight right now. For me, designing is starting out with a basic concept, a few dimensions, and then filling in the gaps as I go along. I knew how big I wanted the desk to be. The top, I wanted it to be 76 inches long, 29 inches wide, and 30 inches off the floor when everything is finished. So given those dimensions gave me the placements of the legs because I wanted a one inch overhang all the way around. That left 74 inches, two inches from 76. So I knew how wide to make the entire frame and the depth similarly one inch overhang, 29 inch wide desk needs to be 27 inches for the frame. So 27 by 74. That gave me the placement of the legs and allowed me also to draw in the apron. I used a simple golden ratio calculation and worked out a depth for this apron. So I drew in the apron, drew in the legs, drew in the top, and then I had to figure out how I was going to draw this arched apron. So the first thing I did was figure out a starting point for this. Um, let me see if I can show you that by turning the camera just a little bit. The starting point for this apron is also a golden ratio calculation. I could go through that with you, but basically just do whatever looks right to you. I wanted to make sure that uh, the arch of this apron started at a set distance, so I marked that spot on both the legs. And I knew that I kind of wanted to come out sort of straight and then start the curve. So I marked off, you can't see it because I've erased it now, but I made a little mark about an inch out and figured that my radius was going to start there and go across. And then what I wanted it to do is I wanted it to kiss the top of the apron right here because when everything is put together, I want this stretcher and this piece to flow together as al almost as if they're one piece. So. Basically, what I knew was I knew the top of the arch and I knew where the so-called bottom of the arch was going to start and I was able to calculate that distance from here to here and that gave me the rise of the arch. I also knew the width, which was between this leg and the other leg, which gave me the length of the radius. Now, I can use a formula to figure out where the point of the radius is to draw this circle. And it's a little bit of math, but it's not terrible. So let me show you how that's going to work. Figuring out how to get an arch or a portion of a circle that big is pretty simple, actually. There's a formula. Math is not my strong suit. But it, it's really pretty straightforward, and if you go to uh, my January article in Wood News Online on the Highland Woodworking Wood, uh, website, you'll see the formula there, and you can plug in your dimensions and figure out a radius for a circle. Basically, here's what we're trying to do. Imagine a big, giant circle, and we want to figure out a portion of that circle, the radius, that we need to get in the center of that circle to draw that radius. So to see how the formula works, it's really pretty straightforward. If you just put, imagine putting that circle inside a square box. Now imagine that that box, this is the apron that I want the top of my arch to kiss, and this is the side of the leg that the arch is going to be coming out of. So to figure out where the center point of this circle needs to be, if I have this dimension across here where the circle kisses the legs on both sides, that dimension we'll call Y. And if I have this dimension from where it kisses the top apron down to this intersecting line, we'll call that X. 
Once I have those two dimensions, plug them into that formula in Wood News Online and you'll get your radius point right here. Turns out for this circle, I need that point to be at 93 and 3 quarter inches. That's a big circle. Now we've got to figure out how to draw it. There's a bunch of different ways to draw a big giant circle. You could use trammel points on a long piece of wood. I decided to just use a string and a pencil. So the question became where to set up the pivot point for the string since it needs to be 93 and 3 quarter inches away and it's almost 8 feet. Um, I could take an 8 foot board and attach it perpendicular to my uh, drawing here and use that as a pivot point. Um, sitting having a cup of coffee looking around my shop, I discovered an easier way to do it. My little DeWalt power planer, portable power planer, has four corner posts that allow the mechanism to ride up and down. And look at that, it's a nice round little post. What a great pivot point for a string to draw a circle. My planer is bolted down to a shop-built cabinet that also is on wheels. Those wheels lock into place. So I can move this thing anywhere in the shop, lock it down. So I tied a string to this little oversized key ring, dropped it over this corner post, and I've got a perfect pivot point to draw a circle with. I put some scraps of wood underneath the MDF primarily because I wanted this long piece of wood here in the center. I marked center points on the drawing and lined up this piece of wood so that I knew it was straight and perpendicular to my drawing. That way I can sight down my line to the pivot point, make sure it's straight, and the arch will be equidistant across, both, uh, across the drawing. Now I was able to measure out Get 93 and 3 quarter inches for the pivot point, lock the wheels down, and I'm ready to draw. With the pivot point set, my string perpendicular to the drawing, I can simply wrap the string around the pencil, rotate the string to get a fine adjustment, and then hold it in place, nice and tight, and draw the arch. Easy does it. So how did things turn out? I think okay. I even uh, drew in some little squiggly lines to look like uh, wood grain. I have no idea why I did that. Anyway, I now have a template that I can use to cut out the arched stretcher and hopefully get it exactly the right size. On this end of the drawing, I drew in the tenon that I'll be cutting on the end of the stretcher. So whether you build from plans, design as you go, or just wing it like I do, just build something and have fun doing it. Happy New Year from the Down to Earth Woodworking Shop. Thanks for watching. See you next time.